I'm Matt Smith. Today on Upfront. The state Senate subpoenas election records from the city of Madison. I'll ask the Senate Majority Leader what happens if the city doesn't comply. Plus, I really sincerely hope you get what's coming to you, you fraudulent Threats against the people who run our elections. What's being done to keep them safe. And Milwaukee Police Chief Jeffrey Norman. His plan to fight crime and his vision for the department. Taking on the issues important to Wisconsin. This is Upfront with your host, Adrian Pedersen. Hi, everyone. I'm Matt Smith in this week for Adrian. Senate Republicans have subpoenaed the city of Madison seeking election records the city refused to provide to the Legislative Audit Bureau. The Senate is seeking certificates for absentee ballots from the November 2020 election and ballots used in tests of voting machines. Madison's clerk said guidance from the Federal Department of Justice says that ballots and election records should not be physically handled by outsiders, and the city offered to make copies for the Audit Bureau. The city is now under a November 24th deadline to comply. We're talking about this and more today with Republican Senate Majority Leader Devin Lemahue. Senator, welcome back to Upfront. Yeah, good morning. Great to be here. Let's begin with, with these subpoenas. This is an incredibly rare move for the state Senate. Why was a subpoena here needed? So we went through the uh, Legislative Audit Bureau process of, of auditing the uh, November 2020 elections. And uh, 29 municipalities worked with the Audit Bureau. State law says that they have to work with the Audit Bureau, yet the city of Madison failed to um, work with the Audit Bureau. So since we feel that the city of Madison is completely ignoring state law, that uh, we felt it's important to see, um, to give the Audit Bureau the opportunity to um, have access to those ballots and uh, fin finish and complete their audit. At this point, are you planning to issue any other subpoenas to any other municipalities? No. Um, in terms of the city of Madison, they're going back to this guidance from the Justice Department. Do you have any concern over, over chain of custody and, and handling of election materials? No, I do not. The uh, we, we have a reference bureau uh, memo that says that they they have to work with the audit bureau. Um, and we we feel that they they need to. How far are you willing to take this, and what are the next steps if they don't comply? You know, we'll we'll go through all of our legal options at that point. But uh, I'm not I'm not sure why what they're hiding or why they they won't comply. A lot of this review also looks at the Wisconsin Elections Commission. I want to talk to you about that? The Racine County Sheriff wants five of the commissioners charged criminally with felonies and misdemeanors. Would you like to see that happen? You know, I'll leave that up to the uh, uh, prosecutors uh, around the state of Wisconsin. But I think it's important after seeing seeing the results of the audit that the election commission actually follow state law and, and go through the rulemaking process, promulgate rules when they're trying to institute um, uh, procedures for elections and uh, essentially follow Wisconsin law. Do you want to reform the commission? And in your mind at this point, what would that look like? You know, we'll have to take a broader look at that. It's it's going to be tough probably to reform it with uh, Governor Ebers in office. But uh, we the, the commission definitely needs to take the, the audit bureau results seriously, follow those recommendations and uh, make sure that they're abiding within state law. Senator Johnson in the past week told me he would like to see the legislature take control of federal elections, essentially ignore any guidance from the State Elections Commission. Do you want to go down that path? You know, I'm not sure how that would be accomplished. Um, we have a state agency for a reason to, you know, look at nomination signatures to, you know, help help candidates along the way. Um, and to make sure clerks around the state know how to uh, administer elections. Um, I think, you know, the legislator unilaterally taking over um, um, elections. I'm not sure how that would work. Um, but, uh, you know, I'll thank Senator Johnson for his his work at the federal level for blocking H.R. 1, which is the national takeover of, of state elections. So you know, he's doing a great job in in Washington. The senator was at the Capitol this past week. He met with some Republicans. Were you in that meeting and, and was this discussed, this idea? I was in that meeting and we discussed a lot of different things, um, what's going on in Washington and, and other things. And, you know, anytime the, the senators, uh, the Senator Johnson's in the Capitol, I'll take every opportunity to talk to him and see what's going on in his world at the federal level. What was the response from state lawmakers, state Republicans to this idea of taking over federal elections? 
You know, we'd have to, we'd have to look at that. I'm not sure that that's actual a legal opportunity to do that. Um, you know, we have a state Supreme Court ruling back from the 60s that the legislature can't just unilaterally pass maps, which is also um, part of part of running elections. And uh, so, yeah, I'm not sure what what legal authority we'd have. Did Senator Johnson tell you whether he's going to run for re-election or not? He did not. He did not. Uh, let's talk about redistricting. Uh, the governor is going to veto the Republican maps that have been approved. This is headed to the courts. Broadly speaking, what happens next? You know, um, it was it was great that we got maps passed this week. It's interesting that in the in the state Senate, the Senate Democrats introduced their own maps after years of telling us that we need nonpartisan maps without legislative input. And, uh, you know, one one Senate Democrat voted against the people's maps commission, the governor's maps, 17 assembly Democrats voted against the governor's people's maps commission. So we think we uh, we know we're confident that we passed uh, constitutional maps that meet every every metric that's um, consistent with uh, fair constitutional maps. So it's up next, it's going to, um, the governor has pretty much stated he's going to veto them, which is unfortunate, um, but it will go through the, the court system. Where do you want this to end up, the state Supreme Court or federal court, and where do you anticipate it will end up? You know, this is a state issue. It's our own legislative map, so I'm, I'm hopeful that it will end up in the state Supreme Court. Uh, with original jurisdiction as, as they intend to do at this point. And uh, I think they'll do their due diligence and uh, and find that our maps are constitutional and, and the ones that should uh, be in place for the next decade. Senate Majority Leader Devin Lemahieu, Senator, thank you. Thank you. Late Friday, Madison's clerk made an offer to the legislature. She offered to allow auditors to handle ballots one by one under the clerk's assistance or to swear in auditors as election officials to comply with chain of custody protocols. Former Justice Mike Gableman, who is leading an investigation for Assembly Speaker Robin Voss, says he may expand his probe to include long-term care facilities. You'll find that story and more election investigation news on the Battleground Wisconsin blog kept by our editorial partner, wispolitics.com. Coming up. This is a coordinated attack. This is an attack on democracy. The threats being made against the people who run our elections. But first, Milwaukee's new police chief is here to talk about getting control over a huge public safety threat. 